Stories are a means to face the past in order to face the future. My name is Asadume B, and every week I will tell you a short story written by a Nigerian writer or author. That's the long and short of it. So without much ado, this week's story is by Nomedi, and it's titled Fulton Avenue. The red dust the car churned up as it drove along bathed the windows like rain, making the outside world dirtier and blurrier as they zoomed past. Rappel half expected children to race after the car and chant, Moto, Moto, like she had once done whenever she escaped her mother's hawk eyes, dancing in the dust, never caring. The car took a sharp turn into the street, and the signpost greeted her. Fulton Avenue. The signpost had been changed, courtesy of whichever association had deemed it their project for the year. But the original green of it had been maintained. The car reached an eventful stop at House 5. House 5 with its wilting brown paint and overgrown front yard. House 5, from memories she had learned to tuck away, relishing in them only when she ached for the familiar. The taxi driver charged her 1,500 naira, cheating her mercilessly. But she had drained herself immediately after she had finalized her bookings to come back home to Enugu. Home. Was this still home? And had it ever been home? The bag in her hand seemed heavier than it had been the last time she hoisted it less than twenty minutes ago. Her throat was parched, like she hadn't downed a bottle of water after she got settled in the taxi. The plastic bottle, crumbling as she latched on and gulped, till the taxi driver had joked. The water is not running. But I do, she muttered under her breath, saying nothing when he asked her what she said. She was thankful it was still high afternoon. Barely anyone had business outside at this time. She fought the urge to look over at House 7, afraid she would flee if she did. Her father's Volvo sat under the fruit tree. Most of the fruit, wasting away on the floor, missed the weeds. She only just realized they were almonds. Her father's Volvo. Where she had once upon a time allowed a boy to lie to her, the memory still so clear that the vividness annoyed her. She walked tentatively to the veranda, not in the least bit surprised that her father's reclining chair still occupied the same spot it always had, but surprised that it had gathered dust given the regularity with which her father sat there. Her hands balled up into a fist as she persuaded herself to knock on the door. She was spared from making that decision as the door swung open and she was brought face to face with the reason that sent her running five years ago. In those few seconds, she forgot how to breathe, drinking in the sight of the little girl who had opened the door, the reality of her swaying rappers so violently she feared she might vomit. Five years of running from someone who looked like God's gift. (sighs) Rappoluchuku. Her mother breathed. Mommy. Her lips muttered before her mother drew her into a hog so tight she hated herself for running. After all these years, her mother still smelt like enchanted powder. The tears embarrassed her, soaking her mother's CWO t-shirt, coming faster and harder with each breath. Mommy, mommy, be cool, my hello, my hello, 
Will you forgive me? <laughs> Mommy, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. She echoed over and over again, not minding the mucus running into her mouth or anyone who might be watching. After a while, she slowly pulled back from her mother and stared at her, lost for words. Her mother had aged, she thought, and immediately hated herself for it. What should she have expected after abandoning her with the mistake she had made? Her mother's hair was cut low, grey hairs outnumbering the black ones like her mother had always wished for. Rappo remembered the countless times her mother had told her how she couldn't wait for her grey hairs to become more visible. Her mother's skin had wrinkled, although the brown of it still shone like it always did, just like hers. Their family members had always heralded their skin as the most flawless of all. Nay, who is she? A little voice pierced through her reverie. She looked just like her father. Only her nose bearing the same similarity as hers. Hola, Aji. I will tell you later. Inugo, go back to your reading, no? You've missed school for two days, so you have to catch up. Her mother said softly, touching Olachi's plaits as the little girl turned and headed indoors. <laughs> Olachi. Olachi is the perfect name for her. I never named her. She did not expect her mother's slap. The force of it tilting her face to the other side. It stung. More emotionally than physically. It carried so much fever she could not condemn it. She wouldn't. She wished her mother would hit her again and again. It might absolve and heal every single pain from the last five years. Rapu. Imeremi. Five whole years. You left. And you never looked back. Not even a single phone call, eh, Rappu? Her mother shouted, her voice laced with pain and tears. I did not kill my mother. But you almost killed me. Her mother turned and went back in, leaving the door open, letting her know she could come in. She wasn't ready to step into the house. So she went and sat on her father's chair and wept, not minding the dust she would be enveloped in. Her father had been sitting in this chair when her mother thrust her out to the veranda and cried. She is pregnant. Her father had taken her by the hand to house seven, where she had spent so much time with Ekene, making the fetus in her womb. Ekene had looked them in the eye and denied it. She had been shocked. He had meant it when he told her earlier he could not let a pregnancy cripple his future. As if it wasn't already crippling hers. Her father had simply taken her back home and sat in this same chair. Her mother's touch brought her back to reality. I thought you would run again. No, Mama. No, I won't, I won't run again. Not ever. Where is Daddy? She should have known immediately she stepped into the compound what the answer was. 
she should have known before her mother looked like someone had slapped her. Your father is dead. Life did not just happen to you alone. Nome Ede is a writer who resides in Lagos, Nigeria. She currently works in content and brand marketing. You can read more of her work on Medium at Ede Noma 23 or on Sela. You can also connect with Noma on Instagram at Noma.ede or on Twitter at Noma underscore Ede. Details and links will be in the episode description. If you've got a story you would like to be featured on this podcast or a published book you want to make into an audiobook, send me a message at Osadumebi on either Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn or Twitter. I look forward to collaborating with you. And if you've enjoyed this week's episode, tell a friend that stories are a good escape for a few minutes each week.